Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. BM Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long range forecast update, guys. I hope you are doing well this morning. I want to spend the first part of this video talking about severe weather potential today, additional rainfall potential as we work throughout this week, and then a big pattern change coming for the eastern ag belt as we work into the start. Of May. So let's get started with the current radar this morning. Here's a look right now. We have a couple of strong storms moving through eastern parts of Illinois, a storm here in uh, western parts of Indiana. Uh, these storms here moving kind of uh, southwest to northeast this morning generally here. Uh, and this is just the first round of what will be several across the area as we work throughout the day today. Here's a secondary line. Actually, severe warnings on this line right now, uh, including the Joplin area in southwestern parts of Missouri. We zoom in here, take a look at that reflectivity value. Some large hail and 70 mile per hour wind gusts possible with this line. This will continue to push further off to the north and to the east as we work throughout the day today, bringing a severe weather threat into the Ohio Valley. If we turn on our day one severe weather outlook, guys, uh, you can see that these storms are already packing a punch in the slight risk area. That's a two on a scale of five, an enhanced risk further off to the east where these storms will be able to tap into even a little bit more instability. Uh, across parts of southern Indiana, Ohio, northern Kentucky, western Pennsylvania, and western New York this afternoon and into this evening. Taking a look here at the simulated radar, I will turn our time on in the top right so you all can uh, have an idea of what time that we are looking at here. I'll shift this over so you can see it. This is from the synopticwx.com platform uh, if you're looking for model data and this is the latest run of the HRRR and uh, again guys this activity further out to the west will be pushing to the east as we work throughout the day today if we zoom out here we can take a full picture look at this continuing with a couple of these rounds of storms as we work throughout the morning hours today uh, but then this activity further out to the west will ramp up in eastern Missouri southern Illinois and eventually into southern Indiana and northern Kentucky as we work into this evening this is by about four or five o'clock this evening guys uh, these storms certainly have the potential of producing damaging winds and, and I think large hail you know I don't want to uh shy away from the hail threat with these storms as well because there's a lot of instability if we take a look at our instability signal as these storms move through you know, we're talking about more than 2,000 joules per kilogram of cape in spots across the lower Ohio Valley. Certainly plenty of energy to produce damaging winds, frequent lightning, and the potential for large hail. I do think the tornado threat is rather isolated in nature. I don't think that's the primary threat with this system as it moves through. By 6, 7, 8 o'clock, these storms continuing to push through the Ohio Valley here, guys. Uh, we've got some storms up into parts of the northeast as well that could produce some damaging wind gusts. And then we have a secondary area across the southern plains that could also pack a punch. Um, these areas continue to deal with some heavy rain over the next seven days days. Taking a look at the forecast over the next seven days, here's a look at our weeks one and two outlook. Uh, overall, continuing to run a little bit milder than normal the next seven days across the Ag Belt. Uh, take a look at the precipitation forecast, though, drier across the north central U.S., more active as this boundary kind of stalls out across the southern plains and into the Ohio Valley. If we go back to the synoptic weather platform here, uh, we favor the GFS forecast this morning. Uh, if we take a look at the total rainfall expected here as we work over the next seven days, we can watch as this fills in uh, kind of throughout the week, but then getting quieter. You can see we don't have much more rain additionally as we work through the weekend and into next week, uh, but certainly some heavy rain continuing to be possible here across Oklahoma. Missouri, uh, and relatively active here across the Ohio Valley as well the next seven days. Uh, again, as we work into the week two time frame, temperatures for the most part in the Ag Belt warmer than normal, but you can see here precipitation forecasts beginning to trend drier, especially for the eastern Ag Belt. You know, I think that we're in a pretty good spot here to finally dry things out and get more planting done if you were in this region. Certainly parts of Kentucky, Missouri, southern Indiana, southern Illinois have been pretty active. This should be a better period with more warm conditions and more dry time in the forecast. Taking a look at the upper level pattern, I think that this is something to monitor as we get into the week two time frame. We send our areas of high pressure well off to the north, and we get these upper level lows to kind of cut off down to the south. That's going to produce, you know, additional heavy moisture threats across the southern plains. My concern for areas further to the north, if you're looking for rain, is when this happens, it has a tendency to trend drier to the north. 
My concern here, as we go throughout the week two time frame, is that there's the risk that the drier than normal conditions could expand further to the north and to the west across the northern plains. It all depends on how these upper level lows evolve. If they can cut off a little bit further to the north, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota will get some rain. If not, as this model here is indicating, they will end up a little bit drier. It's why right now we're leaning towards a solution that's at least more normal or messy with rainfall in the week two time frame for the northern plains. Taking a look here at the overall pattern evolution, we'll kind of go day by day to give you an idea of what we're going to expect the next few weeks here. A cold front moving through as we work into this weekend here, guys. You can see uh, a decently cooler day as we work into Saturday and into Sunday, but it doesn't last. You can see the warmth builds right back in, and it sets up uh, pretty consistently across the middle of the country as we work throughout the week two time frame. Really no notable change expected in the pattern as we go throughout the week two time frame. Consistently warmer than normal expected through the second week of May. And I think a lot of that has to do with our global winds. This is the most dominant pattern driver right now. We have been consistently negative or weaker than normal with our global winds since the middle part of February. And if you look at the forecast out through the next 25 days or so, continuing to stay very negative. In fact, dipping nearly two standard deviations below normal, uh, that would be one of the most negative values that we've seen in early May since the year 2000. We take a look at the week two forecast and we compare that to what the weak global wind correlation looks like. We're already seeing a lot of similarities here with the middle of the country, the central U.S., seeing the most warmth compared to normal. In terms of precipitation, here's our week two forecast. You can see wetter south and west, drier east. Looks very similar here to that same correlation for precip. The blues and purples in this case are drier you can kind of see here in this region and the yellows and greens are wetter than normal and so we're seeing a lot of similarities to this pattern driver right now so what does that mean as we work into weeks three and four well what i decided to do today was look at years and dates where we had a very strong negative am in early may and take that out 10 15 days after it happened what happens in may after a strong negative AAM value. And, you know, we had years like 2012 in here. We had years like 2001 in here that had a strong negative AAM in parts of May. And in general, it favors warmth, especially across the northern tier of the United States, more seasonable down to the south. In terms of precipitation, wetter than normal, in this case, down in the south and east portion of the country, drier than normal for the middle of the country, maybe some moisture in the Canadian prairies in the far northern plains and so you know this would indicate that the drier risks that develop in week two for the eastern ag belt can hang around and if we look at what we ultimately went, went with for our weeks three and four forecast it's more of the same you know i don't see a big pattern change expected as we get into the middle part of may i think it's a warmer than normal pattern especially for the northern tier of the u.s and i think that it's a drier than normal pattern for the eastern ag belt and I think that some of that can expand into more of Nebraska and Iowa and maybe Kansas as well as we go throughout this period. I wouldn't be shocked. You know, at times you're probably going to get some moisture through the plains in here, this type of an action. But I think the further down the road that we go, the more likely it is that that kind of starts to wind down. And so I think, uh, you know, drier than normal. For a good portion of the Ag Belt possible, your best precipitation chances far southern plains and far parts of the northern plains, which again should be good to get some planting done, but the combination here, I would not be shocked to start seeing the soil moisture dry out once again. If we take a look at years for May as a whole that had a strong negative AAM, a very strong weak global wind as we go throughout the month, here are the top years, 18, 2012, 2010, 07, 03, 01, and 2000. These years were very warm throughout the month of May. And if you take a look at the data for May right now, maybe a little bit further west of where these analogs indicate, but they certainly tend to favor the warm pattern as we go throughout the month of May. In terms of precipitation, you can see drier risks on the west coast, drier risks especially Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, expanding into the central plains maybe some wetter risks further to the north. It's very similar here to what the latest CFS monthly is indicating 
in terms of dryness east, some wetter risk south, maybe in the Canadian prairies and the northern plains for the month of May. Here's a look at the EPS weekly. Matches up with this uh, pretty close. And so uh, we're seeing multiple different pattern drivers talking right now in terms of this transition to being less active across the eastern belt as we get into May, which again should help folks that maybe have been a little bit behind in terms of planting finish things up. But it will also likely start to dry out that soil moisture and lead into our concerns into summer, which is drought potential for the middle part of the country. Guys, that's all that we have for today's forecast. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great rest of your day.